Key points about necrotizing fasciitis. Definition of necrotizing fasciitis. Necrotizing fasciitis is a rapidly progressing bacterial infection that affects the subcutaneous tissue. It spreads aggressively through the facial planes, leading to widespread tissue destruction. Necrotizing fasciitis represents the most serious form of necrotizing soft tissue infection and can occur in any body part. Pathophysiology Microbial invasion of the subcutaneous tissue occurs through external trauma or direct spread from a perforated organ, particularly those in the gastrointestinal or urogenital systems. Bacterial growth within the superficial fascia releases enzymes and toxins that cause the infection to spread. This process leads to poor microcirculation, ischemia in affected tissues, and ultimately, cell death and necrosis. Thrombosis of small vessels traversing the fascia causes profound skin ischemia, which is a key feature in the progression of necrotizing fasciitis. Importantly, during the early stages, the skin may appear normal despite extensive infection of the underlying fascia. Risk factors. Several factors can increase the risk of developing necrotizing fasciitis. Weakened immune system. This includes conditions such as diabetes, human immunodeficiency virus, and chronic diseases. Peripheral vascular disease. Compromised blood flow makes tissues more susceptible to infection. Trauma. Any break in the skin, including surgical wounds, insect bites, and injuries, can provide an entry point for bacteria. Obesity. Obesity is associated with an increased risk of infection in general. Intravenous drug use. This practice can introduce bacteria directly into the bloodstream or tissues. Types of necrotizing fasciitis. Clinicians commonly classify necrotizing fasciitis by the microbial source of the infection. Type 1 is the most common form. It is polymicrobial involving a mix of gram-positive cocci, gram-negative rods, and anaerobes. This type frequently occurs in the perineal and trunk areas of immunocompromised individuals, particularly those with diabetes or peripheral vascular disease. Type 2 is typically caused by group A streptococcus, also known as streptococcus pyogenes, sometimes in conjunction with Staphylococcus aureus. While classically located on the extremities, it can also affect the trunk. Type 3 is a rare, gram-negative monomicrobial form of necrotizing fasciitis, often caused by Vibrio species. This type carries a very high mortality rate of 30 to 40%. Type 4 is an extremely rare fungal form of necrotizing fasciitis, primarily caused by Candida species. It usually affects individuals with compromised immunity, often after trauma or burns. Clinical presentation. Early diagnosis of necrotizing fasciitis is critical but can be challenging as it can initially resemble cellulitis. One of the most important distinguishing features of necrotizing fasciitis is pain that is disproportionate to the visible skin changes. Early stage symptoms can include erythema, tenderness extending beyond the reddened area, swelling, and hot skin. Later stages may manifest as blistering, skin discoloration, Crepitus, a crackling sensation under the skin due to gas production, and gangrene. Systemic symptoms like fever, chills, and confusion may also appear. Diagnosis Surgical exploration and tissue biopsy remain the gold standard for diagnosing necrotizing fasciitis. The presence of facial necrosis, myonecrosis, or loss of facial integrity along tissue planes along with the presence of foul-smelling or dishwater pus, is diagnostic. The laboratory risk indicator for necrotizing fasciitis scoring system can also help distinguish necrotizing fasciitis from other soft tissue infections. A score of 6 or higher is highly suggestive of necrotizing fasciitis. Imaging techniques, including computed tomography and magnetic resonance imaging, can provide additional information, but they should not delay surgery. Treatment. 
Treatment for necrotizing fasciitis requires a multidisciplinary approach involving several key components. Aggressive resuscitation. The goal is to stabilize the patient's condition and ensure adequate tissue perfusion and oxygen delivery. Surgical debridement. This crucial step involves the removal of infected and necrotic tissue. Multiple debridements are often necessary to ensure complete removal of infected tissue. Antibiotic therapy. Broad-spectrum antibiotics are used initially to target the wide range of potential pathogens. Once the causative organisms are identified, antibiotic therapy can be tailored accordingly. Supportive intensive care. This may be necessary to address organ dysfunction and provide comprehensive critical care management. Here are some broad-spectrum antibiotics used to treat necrotizing fasciitis. Polymicrobial infections. Piperacillin tazobactam a combination of acarbapenum and vancomycin, or ceftriaxone and metronidazole can be used. Group A streptococcus infections. Penicillin combined with clindamycin is effective. MRSA infections. Vancomycin or linozolid are recommended. Anaerobic infections. Metronidazole or clindamycin are used to target anaerobic bacteria. Vibrio vulnificus infections. Ceftazidime combined with doxycycline is the treatment of choice. Anesthetic implications. Anesthesia for patients with necrotizing fasciitis is often challenging and should be managed by experienced personnel. Patients may require multiple general anesthetics for serial debridement, reconstruction, and skin grafting. Preoperative assessment should focus on the severity of sepsis, the extent of anatomical involvement, the presence of shock or multi-organ dysfunction, and the adequacy of hemodynamic resuscitation. The potential for significant blood loss during surgical debridement should be anticipated. Invasive monitoring, including arterial and central venous pressure monitoring, is often necessary. Prognosis. The overall mortality risk is reported to be around 12.6% in the United States and 25% in the United Kingdom. The prognosis for individuals with necrotizing fasciitis depends heavily on prompt diagnosis and aggressive treatment. Delays in diagnosis and treatment significantly increase the risk of tissue loss, amputation, and death. Early surgical debridement is the most crucial factor affecting mortality. Necrotizing fasciitis remains a serious condition. However, survival rates have improved with timely, and appropriate management. Question number one. Which of the following is one of the most distinctive early clinical feature of necrotizing fasciitis? The correct answer is C. Early diagnosis of necrotizing fasciitis is critical but can be challenging as it can initially resemble cellulitis. One of the most important distinguishing features of necrotizing fasciitis is pain that is disproportionate to the visible skin changes. Question number two. What is considered the gold standard for definitively diagnosing necrotizing fasciitis? The correct answer is B. Surgical exploration and tissue biopsy remain the gold standard for diagnosing necrotizing fasciitis. The presence of facial necrosis, myonecrosis, or loss of facial integrity along tissue planes, along with the presence of foul-smelling pus, is diagnostic. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.